honored to be here at Christendom. I love Christendom so much, and uh, my family does. Obviously, I think uh, out of the 10 kids, uh, anyone in college has basically gone here at some point in their life. So um, we love Christendom, and we're from uh, Front Royal, so uh, it's actually Rappahannock County, which is just 20 minutes south of here. Uh, if you know Rappahannock Cellars Winery, Liv does. Um, she works there anyway, and, uh, and uh, we live right across the street, so it's great to be home um, and with you guys. I'm in the middle of a tour, like Matt said, with Five for Fighting, so we've played in, uh, in Philadelphia and then came home and luckily did not play in Boston tonight. Boston is tomorrow. They're having a huge storm, so it's great to be here in warm Virginia right now. Um, so I want to talk to you about my background as a musician and performer and then some highlights uh, and then how Christendom has inspired me as an artist and really shaped me. So I started playing music really young, uh, performing at a young age. I loved performing, uh, just like from seven years old. Just anything I could do, plays, uh, performing on my piano, singing, anything. I just wanted to be performing. And I started a bluegrass band with my sister when I was 12. And we would go to like different uh, little churches and uh, bluegrass festivals around Virginia and perform and I just like loved it. Uh, when I was 15 and she was 18 she decided to actually go to George Mason. She's the only Miller that didn't go to Christendom. Don't worry. I don't know. Um, yeah we, we have her over only twice a year. Don't worry. <laughs> but, and uh, I wanted to continue doing music in actually a more uh, like a bigger way. So my dad and I went to Nashville and we recorded a seven song EP, so a CD, and then we shopped that to different record labels. And I ended up getting signed with Curb Records, which is mainly a country label. Uh, they had uh, Tim McGraw, Hank Williams Jr., uh, Leanne Rhymes, more uh, current artists, Ronnie Atkins, Lee Bryce, and uh, there's a guy named Dylan Scott who's um, doing pretty well too. So they also had pop and soundtrack and Christian music. And so my song um, that they decided to make the single, um, they um, featured it in Christian radio, and it did pretty well. And I was enjoying it, but I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I was 16, 17 years old and didn't really want to do it as much as I thought I did in that full-time level. So I asked my parents, said, hey, I want to go to college. And I said, cool. So I applied to Christendom and got in and was so excited. A lot of my best friends growing up, um, you're going to know probably some of these names, the O'Reilly's and um, the Mick Shirley's, O'Donnell's. I went to, um, actually did tutoring group with Rory O'Donnell and, uh, and I had uh, just become friends with a lot of different people in this community and all of them were going to be freshmen at the same time. So I was super excited. So at my time in Christendom, sort of the traveling took a back seat, um, but I still worked uh, really hard on music while I was here. Uh, and then got to play you know, at the pub nights and things like that, which was awesome. And um, had several crushes on seniors that didn't like me back. So I uh, inspired some, some great unrequited love songs. Um, so that's for another time. Um, but anyway, so it was really, really amazing. And I loved that time um, at Christendom. So um, after I left school, I went back to Nashville and recorded more music. I song wrote for... Um, of like a couple years almost till I recorded more music and recorded a song called You're Not Alone and that song um, was on pop radio which was really cool it sort of happened we were at Sirius XM in New York City on the Catholic channel and uh, the guy that runs the pop station The Pulse heard us playing You're Not Alone and said I really like that song and they started playing it and because they did a lot of what we'd say terrestrial so just like regular radio stations started playing You're Not Alone, so it was really cool. And then our, uh, my song Six Foot Two came out, and that was also on pop radio, and then was on Dancing with the Stars, which my family had never watched. And let's just say that the dancing is not something you would see at Italian night at Christendom, um, <laughs> which we learned um, when we watched it. But it was really cool because Six Foot Two uh, was a waltz, and so it was actually really, really beautiful. Um, so I opened for Andy Grammer, 
um, Plain White Tees, Colby Calais, um, and my favorite, the Backstreet Boys. Um, it's really sad. Yeah, right? It's, it's sad how young you guys are because, like, that used to be, the response used to be even so much bigger. Uh, but it's okay. Um, I, I realized that I went to, I first attended Christendom in 2007, which I was like, wow, that officially makes me an old person compared to you guys. Anyway, um, but uh, so that was really cool. I uh, opened for them in Disney World. And it was really awesome. My friend Mary Kate Vanderwoody um, came with me, and we were just like in heaven for two days. It was so great. Uh, so, but my best performance definitely was performing for uh, Pope Francis when he came to uh, the U.S. in 2015. So in Philadelphia, they had the Festival of Families. And we got to perform for him. It was crazy. This uh, guy, the promoter for the festival, uh, called me and said, Hey, uh, would you like to sing for Pope Francis? Aretha Franklin, Andre Bocelli, The Fray, Jim Gaffigan's doing comedy. And they're going to perform. There's going to be like 800,000 people there. They'll be on CNN and Fox News. Like, would you like to do that? I was like, yeah, sure. That sounds cool. <laughs> um, and uh, so that was really awesome. And Mark Wahlberg... Uh, uh, introduced me. He called me Maria Miller, which is fine, very normal. <laughs> I'm Marie, but it's okay. Uh, and uh, so it was a really amazing night, and it felt very special because I felt like we uh, we sort of represented um, the Orthodox Catholic, the young Catholic in America, because uh, it was me and two of my friends that love the church, and, and so it was really cool to perform for him. It was kind of funny, too, because we were supposed to play two songs, uh, You're Not Alone and Six Foot Two. But then they decided last minute that they're going to have to cut You're Not Alone. And I'm going to play Six Foot Two for you. Uh, so I'm going to speak uh, for you guys for a little bit. We're going to take a super quick break and then I'm going to do some performance so you'll hear it. And Six Foot Two is about not being too picky with who you date. And uh, so it talks about a guy with blonde hair, blue eyes, and uh, six two. And when they asked me to play six foot two, I thought that was kind of weird. I was like, is Pope Francis six foot two? I don't, I don't really get the, what it is. And, and You're Not Alone is a song about friendship and about being there for each other and tough times. I thought it was perfect for a conference about family. Uh, but they said, no, actually, uh, we're going to have to cut You're Not Alone. You're only going to get to play six foot two. And so I emailed them. Here I was, this little baby artist. And everyone else, you know, Rita Franklin, I'm like, no, I have to play. You're not alone. And they actually said it was okay. So I played um, both songs. But actually, Pope Francis had been out all day, and he was tired. So I played two songs. And then they decided that no one else was going to get to play two songs. So Aretha Franklin, Andre Bocelli, only got to do one. But <laughs> I got to do, yeah. And not to keep going on the story, but I have to tell you guys this, because you get it. You guys know Jim Gaffigan, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, duh. Okay, so he said at this, this is like so inside scoop. You guys are just, that's how much I love you. Um, he, uh, he said it's, it's, um, it's Jim's birthday today because Jim Caviezel was there. And I was like, it's Christmas? Get it? Because he's Jesus. <laughs> and he used that. He used that line. On, on, and then I was like, I'm a Jim Gaffigan writer at this point. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So anyway, so that was amazing. Um, more recently, I released uh, an album called Letterbox, which was really cool. It was featured on uh, Billboard Magazine, NPR, Sirius XM, and also had a lot of Spotify playlisting. And uh, I love music. It's a, it's a huge honor to be able to do this. And I'm, you know, as a smaller artist, um, when I get emails and uh, things on social media about how my music has helped anyone. It means so much. And a really cool story is there's uh, two friends that got You're Not Alone tattoos on their foot. Um, they, were, they were mamas, and they were in the hospital together. Um, they had two, their two little boys were sick, and one of the boys actually passed away. Um, but they formed this beautiful friendship amidst the tragedy, and their theme song was my song, You're Not Alone. Um, I love that story so much. Um, I also really love that story because I'm not cool enough to ever get a tattoo. Um, and the fact that they got a tattoo for me was like, wow, that's cool. Um, so these stories make me really, really love my job. But I couldn't do this if I didn't know the why. See, I've always wanted to change the world. Ever since I was younger, I was like, I want to do that. But my Christian education helped me see that you could change the world through the power of beauty. Dostoevsky tells us that beauty will save the world. And this quote resonates with us because we have felt it in our own lives. 
How many times have we been inspired when we've read Lord of the Rings or Persuasion or listened to Fred Astaire's The Way You Look Tonight? That feeling of almost bittersweet joy, a longing inside yourself. This is thought is not only from our own experience, but it's been talked about throughout the ages. I learned that in Dr. Kodavak's class. It all became clear when we studied Plato's Symposium. Plato talks about the ability for beauty to make us better. He writes, what if the man could see beauty itself, pure, unalloyed, stripped of mortality and all its pollution, stains and vanities, unchanging divine, the man becoming in that communion the friend of God, himself immortal. Christendom also gave me a chance to be immersed in beautiful things. At Christendom, we studied uh, characters like Sonia from Crime and Punishment, Antigone, Sebastian from Brideshead. The teachers here dove into those books with me and they unveiled the incredible depth of those stories. Many of these characters have actually found themselves in my songs. Believe it or not, I used Andromache. Does anyone know who Andromache is? Duh. Okay. Um, in my song, Story. And to be honest, the only part I liked in the Iliad was Hector and Andromache's romance. But anyway, that's a side note. Um, on a very practical level, Christendom has really helped me as an artist um, because it's actually an artist's schedule. Um, so a lot of late nights and then sometimes early mornings, a lot of making your own schedule to reach deadlines. Uh, the skill's kind of great for anyone who works as a contractor or um, starting your own business is that you know if you don't get something done there's no one to yell at you except for yourself and I think Christendom is a great way to start that for me as an artist um, it's actually hilarious when I think about it our nights are usually playing music and drinking and having to get up early so it's exactly like your life right now so um, uh, so did not, I did not only learn that beauty can save us it can change us in Dr. Kodabak's class um, and not only was I inspired by great books that I was reading and managing a busy schedule, but most importantly, Christendom inspired me to want to become a saint. All the teachers are amazing, but in particular, I remember Mr. Brown, who was not only a great teacher, but an inspiring person, and made me desire to become better, not only as a student, but as a human being. Actually, pretty recently, and here I am, like 10 years later, still inspired by Mr. Brown, we kind of got out of him that he was doing a fast. Um, my sister noticed that his skin looked like really vibrant. <laughs> she was like, what are you doing? And they were doing this like really extreme fast um, uh, over Advent. And uh, I guess like cutting out like all sweets and alcohol and everything. And, and they're also taking cold showers. So my sister Carol and I decided like we're going to do that too. We have like longer hair than men. So don't give us a hard time. We didn't do it every every time we showered, let's just say that. Um, but it was just funny, it was like, even after all this time, 10 years later, he still was inspiring me to become better. Uh, one thing that I love too, is that Christendom makes it uh, really easy uh, for mission trips. We were just talking about a mission trip um, like a few minutes ago, that uh, young man went from the DR. And I actually just went to Uganda, which was really cool. And I used to do uh, Shield of Roses and um, work with Mr. Brown. Um, we go out into uh, the, uh, the lunch um, bags for the homeless in D.C. And it kind of was my first time ever doing something like that. Um, my trip to Uganda, I just got back actually a couple weeks ago, and it was amazing. I worked with an organization called Imprint Hope, and uh, they work with children with disabilities. And it's an amazing thing in Uganda to do that because there's no uh, funding. Um, there's really no like health care kind of thing for families uh, with children with disabilities, but kind of worse than that is that the culture is that if you have a disability, that uh, you're cursed and a lot of these uh, families are pressured to abandon their children. And to, so we actually, like I held a little girl in my arms that was left in the field for a couple days, but her mom decided um, to come back and get her and she brought her to the center. And so they do physical therapy and then education on the importance of each human life. And that was really amazing. And I have to say that the form, the forming at Christina, just in philosophy, theology, and history, everything like that, um, was how I think how I could see the importance of outreach, if that makes sense. Um, it kind of forms your whole person, and then you have this um, desire to give after that. Um, but this is kind of my favorite part about my education at Christina. Christina inspired me to know beauty himself. 
John Paul II wrote, I think, the most important writing for any artist to read, whether you're a professional or you just love art, you have to read this. Um, it's his letter to artists. When he tells us, beauty is a key to the mystery and a call to transcendence. It is an invitation to savor life and to dream of the future. That is why the beauty of created things can never fully satisfy. It stirs that hidden nostalgia for God which a lover of beauty, like St. Augustine, could express in incomparable terms, late I have loved you, beauty so old and so new, late have I loved you. There are so many opportunities at Christendom to get to know him who is beauty. I remember sitting in the chapel quietly, having, as Father McGraw said, that 15-minute heart-to-heart with God. When many of our peers are the least faithful in college, Christendom offers an opportunity to become a courageous Catholic that you can be right now. Dostoevsky writes that beauty is mysterious as well as terrible. God and the devil are fighting there, and the battlefield is the heart of man. There is truly a battle in our culture. In 2015, Hollywood released Fifty Shades of Grey, but they also released Inside Out. Have you guys seen that? Hunger Games, Mockingjay, and Cinderella. So in the same year, there was beautiful movies being made, and then, ew, you know? Um, It's a battle. So my goal as an artist uh, is to fight the good fight through making beautiful music. And I believe that my Christian education has been a huge help. So if you're an artist of any kind, take advantage of the beauty, and it's really everywhere. In the chapel, we, it's a beautiful place, I think Virginia is amazing, um, surrounding you here. It will truly change your life and inspire you to make more beautiful art after you leave. Thank you.